Hey guys, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have a Dell Latitude 15 3510 laptop. I'm going to take you on a quick teardown and disassembly tour, open the computer up, show you what you can access inside. So first thing guys, power down the computer the correct way, make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then going to flip the computer over to access our bottom case screws. Now you see there's three screws along this bottom edge, three screws along this top edge, and then one on each side near the center. Now these screws don't actually come out of the bottom case, they'll just loosen. And then you're gonna take a small, flat, preferably plastic pry tool. I say plastic because they'll scratch your computer case a lot less than a metal pry tool will, but they're strong enough to be able to take this bottom case off. So go around the outside seam of the bottom case, and gently but firmly pry it up all the way around. Don't put the pry tool too far in. You can damage some internal components. Just keep it on the edge. And if you get stuck going in one direction and you can't get it up, leave it alone. Go to the other side and continue in the other direction. After you get your bottom case up, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now as a quick computer repair side note, guys, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, I have it sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet will go a long way to help you damaging things in your computer. If you need any help with tools or supplies, as well as any replacement or upgrade parts for the Latitude 3510, there'll be a link above, also below in the description. It'll have all the tools and supplies that I would use on this computer, as well as all of these replacement and upgrade parts here if you needed help finding those. Now to get this battery out, you have these four screws near each of the white triangles, all four screws right here. And then the battery comes up here and plugs into the motherboard right here. So you have a choice of where you want to unplug the battery from. If you're going to unplug it from this top connector there, um, as with any cables and wires in a computer, guys, try not to pull on the wires if at all possible. Try to just manipulate the plug. So this plug is easy. It's got a grip on either side. You can use your fingernails or a pry tool and wiggle that right out of that port. If you want to unplug it from here, that's just a snap, so that snaps right off. And that's how you'd get your battery out. If you want the battery information, this was a 40 watt hour battery. However, an upgrade is available in a 53 watt hour battery, 11.25 um, volt. And the Dell part number you're looking at for the replacement is the JK6Y6. Again, though, I will have uh, the battery replacement options below in the description in that link with all the replacement parts for this computer. Okay, so the next thing I'll point out is your storage. You have an M.2 port right here, PCIe, NVMe. This can take Gen 4 solid state drives. You see a smaller one in, in here. Many of you will have that stock, uh, but there's also a couple screw holes here for the larger solid state drives. So you would undo the single screw in the middle remove the metal bracket, and you can get that solid state drive out. Uh, you have another storage aspect here. Down here, you'll see a hard drive caddy. It's a 2.5 inch SATA drive caddy. It's held down by these four screws. And then as you can see, they have these four screws here to secure the hard drive or solid state drive of the 2.5 inch drive inside that caddy, two screws on each side. Uh, it also comes with your hard drive connector cable there, the SATA connector cable, you plug that in, and then you plug the other end into the motherboard right here where it says HDD hard drive. That's where that would plug in. So as mentioned earlier, the link below in the description with all the replacement and upgrade parts, I'll have some 2.5 inch hard drive and solid state drive options. Uh, I'll also have some solid state drive options for the M.2, again, Gen 4 uh, solid state drives for up here. And as a quick side note on this, if you're installing a new drive for storage, you will need to install a new operating system onto that drive. Uh, in order for your computer to work. There will be two video links below in the description. One, how to install Windows 10 to a Dell computer, and the other one, how to install Windows 11 to a Dell computer. The next thing I'll shout out is your memory. You have two RAM ports right here. Uh, these are Sodium DDR4s. Uh, for those of you with the Intel Celeron model, you're looking at 2400 megahertz. For those of you with the i3, i5, i7 models, you're looking at 2667 megahertz for your RAM. Uh, this computer will max out at 32 gigabytes of RAM, which means if you want to max it out, that's a 16 gigabyte stick in each port. And I always say, guys, RAM is one of the easiest and cheapest things to max out 
uh, one of the easiest aspects of the speed of your computer to max out. Um, so I always recommend people just max out their RAM. It's easy and it's cheap. So the way that you operate the RAM, guys, you have a spring-loaded metal arm on either side. To get the RAM stick out, you would pry those apart from each other, away from the RAM stick gently. The RAM stick will then release. Oftentimes, it'll pop up a little bit, and you can slide it out of the port. To put it back in, as you notice, there's a long section and a short section to that port. So you can't put the RAM in upside down. You can only get it in the right way. And then once it's in there nice and flush, you see the gold line nice and even, you press down in the center and these metal arms will latch onto it and hold it in place. If you're just looking to replace a RAM stick that's bad, below in the description in that link with all the replacement parts and tools, uh, I will have a, a single 16 gigabyte stick. For those of you that do want to max it out, I'll try to give you a couple different 32 gigabyte kit options. Um, and, and each kit will have two 16 gigabyte sticks in them. Uh, next thing I'll shout out, I guess, right here in the center, your, your Wi-Fi card. Uh, just like the M.2 port for the solid state drive, the, the, there's a single screw that holds it down. You take that screw up, this metal bar will come out, um, and you can pull the RAM stick out of that port. All that will left to be connected to it are these antenna wire, the white and black antenna wire. Those are just snaps, so they snap straight up and off of your Wi-Fi card. And then to snap them back on, they do have to be at an exact 90 degree angle to snap them back on. Um, if you're not at the right angle and you push too hard, you can damage them. So just be careful. Go slow. If you're not used to it, it can be kind of a pain, uh, but you can snap those back on. Uh, I will have a Wi-Fi card replacement option below in that link in the description. Um, but also, guys, if your Wi-Fi is not working, it could be that the Wi-Fi card's bad and needs to be replaced but it could be other things too, why your Wi-Fi isn't working. So below in the description, in the related link section, um, I'll have a tutorial on how to troubleshoot if your Wi-Fi is not working, just in, in, in case a Wi-Fi replacement doesn't fix it. Uh, the next thing I'll shout out here is your uh, CMOS battery. It's held down to the motherboard with double-sided tape. So if you're looking to replace it, you can pop that off fairly easily, and it plugs into the motherboard right down here. Uh, I'll have a replacement option below in that link. Uh, but also, if you guys are looking to reset BIOS this way and not necessarily to replace the battery, you don't need to physically remove it. Leave it down. Just unplug it for 15, 20 seconds, and that should be sufficient to reset your BIOS system settings. Uh, lastly, well, not lastly, we'll move on to the speakers. There's some other things here. You get your speaker on this side, speaker on this side. They're connected by the cable that runs down here un under the caddy, under the battery. And then midway through, they break off and they plug into the motherboard here under the Wi-Fi cards. So that's where you would access the speaker plug. And I'll have some speaker replacement options below in the description in that link. Uh, this is your LCD cable coming down through this hinge assembly, plugs into the motherboard here. Uh, your antenna wire again, Wi-Fi card up around your fan, uh, this hinge assembly there. And if you're looking to get your fan and your heat sink assembly to clean it out or replace it, be aware there are a lot of cords that run around that fan, so be careful. Um, if you're taking your fan out, you've got to unrun the, the uh, antenna wire. You've got to unrun this large cable going to the board. Uh, and, that, and there's another plug right there too. So just unrun all those cords to be careful. If you're here to clean or vacuum out your fan, uh, make sure you get it here on the other side in this vent. Make sure you clean out that vent. And if you're here to reapply thermal paste after removing these screws and taking up your heat sink assembly, there will be a video link below in the description on how to reapply thermal paste if you guys want that. Um, make sure you clean all the old stuff off. You don't want to put new paste on top of old paste. And then make sure you don't put too much paste down. Um, so again, there'll be a video tutorial link below in the description. But that's a majority of the components that you can access and how to access them. So that's the video, guys. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description. It could save you some time getting an answer. If you do need to leave me a question or comment, please do. I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. To support the channel, please remember to like and share. Subscribe if you enjoy this type of DIY tutorials. And for those of you that want to support the channel a little further, you can always leave a small donation, and there's a couple ways to do that. First, right below the video to the right-hand side, you'll see the Super Thanks button. You can click on that. You can select a tip amount here. 
Second way, you can use your cash app. Find me at dollar sign PC helper. You can leave a dollar amount and you can even leave a little note. So thank you so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.